The question is, the specific name of the anomaly shown in the following radiograph is. Let me increase the size so that it's easier for you to identify. So what is uh, visible in this radiograph is, probably this is the permanent canine that is there. And this is the central or the lateral incisor. Yeah, because this looks like the premolar. Okay. So, this entire thing is what is anomalous. And what you can see over here is you have a radio opacity. If you see the first outer covering, it is extremely radio opaque. Then you have a very thin line which is there over here, visible over here. So, you have a very thin line of radio lucency. Then again, you have a thick line of radio opacity. Sorry. And within this radio opacity, again, you have this entire structure of radio lucency. Okay. So, basically, you have radio opaque, radio lucent, radio opaque, radio lucent, and it all looks like a uh, Tooth like structures. Okay, so what you can see, what is whatever is in yellow is the crown of the tooth. Then within the crown, you have a small radio uh, lucency. Again, within that radio lucency, again, you have a tooth like appearance because see, this is radio opaque, the yellow one, and whatever I'm drawing in pink again is radio opaque and looks like a tooth. So basically, it is a tooth present within a tooth, or it is giving the appearance of a tooth within a tooth. What is this tooth within a tooth? It is nothing but uh, dense invaginators or dense invaginators. So this is basically what is called as tooth within a tooth. It is also known as a dilated odontome, which is the answer to the question over here. Now a few things about dilated odontome or uh, dense, invagin dense invaginators is Oler, O-H-L-E-R. Oler was the one who gave this classification. He classified based on the amount of in, uh, invagination that is present. What is the classification? So type 1 is where it only involves the pulp chamber. The invagination is involving only the pulp chamber. Here. Okay. Type 2 is when it involves two-thirds of the pulp space. That is it involves the chamber as well as two-thirds of the root. Type 3 can be classified into two types, where type 3 is basically involves the entire palpal chamber. And in type 3, you can have two types, either A or B. In A, there is a complete separation between the two fragments, that means tooth within a tooth. Whereas in type 3B, there is complete present the entire uh, secondary structure that is there, that is within the, the tooth which is present within the tooth. So inside, the inside structure involves the entire length of the pulp space and it is extended all the way into the up to the apex of the root. Whereas in type 3a, again the, the structure which is present within has separated from the pain, main pulpal canal. Okay, so you have two tooth like structures. In addition to that, this is also called as the French emblem. This was a PGI question. It is called as Plurdelis or the French emblem sign and this is a type, uh, term that is being given for dense imaginators. Lastly, what we need, uh, what I thought I should show you because they might ask these questions in the future much more in the future to you, much more frequently. So right now what we saw was uh, an IOP. However, there may be instances where they may just give you an OPG like what is given, what I have put up over here and they might ask you to identify the structure. So again, if you can notice, you can see two tooth-like structures. The one on the outside is green, whereas the one again inside, you can see that it is radio, highly radio opaque. That means this amount of road radio opacity is attributed to enamel. So you have enamel which is present both outside as well as again within the pulp chamber, as in the level of radio opacity. So this is again giving a tooth within a tooth appearance, and also that is why they you are supposed to be aware about these terms as well as be exposed to more picture based questions because they may ask these questions more in, uh, often and frequently to you in the future.